Hi, welcome to the second video. So let's start with the rescue of the Princess Bride, reflected in the constellation Perseids and the Sun and Mercury entering into the Lion's Gate to Jerusalem, quickly followed by this Princess Bride riding on an ass with five maidens behind her. So the narrative of the meeting and subsequent wedding of David and Abigail is actually also transporting us from the sheepfold, the cattlefold in Cancer on to the constellation Leo. So Abigail is a type of the wise bride. She, upon meeting David, intercedes on behalf of her household and her foolish, evil husband Nabal. She seeks peace with David, but she also prevents him from shedding innocent blood. She continues to prophesy over him while submitting to his lordship. And if you recall the reflection of the Gemini bride and groom, the posture uh, they both have in this uh, picture is actually exactly matching that of Gemini. So David ends up marrying Abigail, the prince's bride and wise peacemaker. She is broken free by the Lord, because her husband Nabal is given 10 days of time to repent, but he refuses to and dies. So upon his death, she, like Princess Andromeda, is freed from the shackles to the world and her evil husband, a type of Satan. And now she's free to marry the anointed prince, a type of Jesus. So in the constellations, uh, Perseus and Andromeda, we see how Perseus, the breaker, is holding the head uh, of the star called Algol, the trodden underfoot, and that is a reflection of David slaying Goliath. So the Princess Bride rescue, all the distortions from Disney set aside, is actually the original display is in the heavens, and that's what the Lord is highlighting to us in the Perseids and the Sun and Mercury's entry into Leo. And Abigail, the wise bride and type of the Church of Philadelphia, upon her being called by the messengers of David, asking her hand in marriage, actually saddles an ass, moves from her sheep farm, Nabal her former husband was the owner of a large sheep farm. She saddles an ass and brings five maidens with her to meet David in Jerusalem. So there is much more in the article um, about uh, this beautiful story. Underneath the link uh, at her name Abigail is an audio, uh, a video file with an audio recording and a beautiful rendition of more the interpersonal uh, goings on between David and Abigail, and it's a beautiful type of the wise bride. So, Abigail rising in haste upon the arrival of David's messengers is a reflection of what Matthew 25, verse 1 to 13, uh, relays about the five virgins. So, the bride is ready to go. Uh, oil in hand, and she prompts the five wise to follow right behind her. And then, of course, there are the five foolish who are still asleep and have no oil. So what I found interesting is that Abigail actually means the father's joy and the gift of the father. So the wise bride, the Philadelphia church, is actually the joy and the gift of the father to the sun. So tying this narrative in with the count of Pentecost being fully come, we know that the seven Sabbaths plus 50 days led to the July 20th signpost. And subsequently, there is going to be a new meat offering. And if you look at how the verse is constructed in scripture, you can actually see that between the counting of the marrow after the Sabbath from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. 
The next verse, even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, ye shall come number fifty days. There is a semicolon afterward. That implies that the content of both elements is connected, but there is also the ability of a space of time transpiring, and I believe that's exactly what we are looking for. Because the new meat offering unto the Lord, that would be us. And I believe the transpiring time between uh, July 20th and the new meat offering is exactly where we are now. So new meat actually points to the people's first fruits. And in the case of Pentecost, it is leavened. And leaven is not just a type of sin when it's filled with uh, man's glory, but if it's filled with God's glory, that is the uh, opposite of being leavened with sin. So this new meat is infilled with God's glory. Much like Abigail, the wise bride, is the Holy Spirit filled gift of the Father to his anointed David, typing his son Jesus. And this is what the new meat uh, traditionally looks at, which is offered at Pentecost. They are two loaves of uh, leavened bread. They are uh, formed in a three strand structure, which also is indicative of DNA and it is a reflection of the Lord's double raising, the double raising of his own, both the dead in Christ and those alive in Christ. So the temple priests were instructed to take the harvested grain and bake two loaves of bread with leaven. Glory filled, modeled as DNA, it's known as challah bread. These two loaves would be lifted up and waved in the air to God as the first fruits of the wheat harvest. These two wheat loaves are symbolic of two groups of people, as the spring barley wave sheave offering was symbolic for Christ's resurrection. The two loaves wave offering symbolism was not fully re represented in the first Pentecostal infilling, because when the Holy Spirit was breathed upon the disciples in the first upper room meeting, remember the second day, and subsequently came down upon the 120, at that time those infilled did not go up yet. We understand that Pentecost has not yet been fully fulfilled. We're awaiting the fully come portion. This should not be a surprise because the Apostle Paul tells that Pentecost is a student two-stage redemption transaction. The first installment was and continues to be the earnest deposit of the Holy Spirit upon salvation. The second and final installment will likely be the redemption of the purchased possession and the transformation of our bodies. Paul says that we have the first fruits of the Spirit, which aligns with his writings on the resurrection of righteousness in 1 Corinthians 15. At the final Pentecost, when God harvests Christ's own, he will resurrect the dead in Christ and translate the living in Christ, both Jew and Gentile made one in him. I understand these two leavened loaves uh, to be raised and caught up in the clouds with Jesus is the picture of Pentecost fully come. So interestingly, the name, the rabbinical name for Shavuot, we know as Pentecost, is Hach HaAzeret, I hope I don't butcher the name, or simply Azeret, meaning Feast of Conclusion, implying a preceding process. They also refer to Pentecost as Hach HaPikarim, meaning the Feast of First Fruits, implying a subsequent harvest. So, Although they changed the Pentecost timing to stress the importance of the Old Testament law giving and excluded the summer wheat harvest, debasing believers time-wise with regard to Pentecost, because, of course, they may not have wanted to point to Yeshua, to Jesus, the name still leaves us clues as to when to expect the summer wheat harvest. So within the portion of the Psalms of Ascend in the article, where you can read how the pilgrims sang these psalms upon their way to Jerusalem and their final steps towards the temple uh, were steep, 
so they must have felt a little bit like we are today and Psalm 122 is especially interesting because that's where Trump was tied to Nehemiah. So during his inaugural, inaugural sermon, the uh, reverend compared Trump to the leader Nehemiah. So Nehemiah's wall around the city, reflective of the wall of the Holy Spirit, around us and Jesus and the mountains of Jerusalem being the protective wall about, around real Jerusalem was actually connected with Trump, of course, deceptively. And um, there is uh, more information with regard to that sermon, but also a very, very critical review. After this critical review, we can discern that the Tying in of Trump and Nehemiah was not just false, but it's been done deliberately and on purpose. Because in addition to his wall around the country, uh, ultimately it will be effectuated with imprisoning his own citizens, his protective wall around Jerusalem in the so-called peace and security uh, deals he is forging, actually going against the law of God, in addition to his space walls, is nothing other than furthering the elite's new world order. And there's a link to a previous article which proves that Trump uh, and his Orwellian pig rule is only uh, paving the way for the Judas goat to take his place and finish his job of dividing and undermining the country and leading the sheep to the slaughter. So, after the Psalms of Ascent, uh, there's a portion in the article dealing with the former wise or magi who were prompted to seek the Lord mid-August 3 BC because of the celestial signs. And that was at the moment of the first uh, Bethlehem star the conjunction of Jupiter and Venus on August 12, 3 BC, and its first rising the next day, it took place exactly where the Sun and Mercury are right now, so underneath the sickle of Leo the Lion. So when the wise were prompted into care to find the Lord, and they met him just about one year and three months later, we're also reminded of what the heavens looked like upon the Lord's birth. So at the time of Jesus' birth, 9-11-3 BC, at the moment of his birth, it's been calculated that the ear of corn touched the horizon. And why is that interesting? Because the moment the wheat, uh, the star Spica Alpha Virginis touched the horizon upon Virgo's ascent, it may also be a clue for our departure. Note how Neowise is currently resonating with that ear of corn in her left hand because Neowise is signal signaling the branch held by Virgo in her right hand. The branch is signaling the sun or the branch coming down. And here you can see that with a little bit more detail. So this is the branch in Virgo's right hand, indicative of the sun, he who cometh, and the branch. And here are some references in scripture with regard to Jesus coming down as the branch. So in this portion of the article, you can read more about Enoch being taken on a seventh day and searched out on an eighth, and how the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 1 to 2, in reverse, is a mirror of the book of Revelation. And the rapture of Enoch is a reflection of the wise bride, the bridal party, being taken up. So here, the Genesis 2 back to 1 is compared to the end times, and both in structure and content, they match. So here we can see visualized how the planet, a wandering star, Uranus, is now marking the Amal, mid-head star of the Lamb. 
and look at where this narrative is taking place right underneath the anointed prince, the rescued prince's bride, soon to wed.